The city has also reached its goal of at least 50% electric vehicle purchases over the past year. Well, the wait is almost over as the highly anticipated Metro Line extension to Santa Monica gets ready to open on May 20th. Rasha Goel has more as city leaders came out for a test run. Thanks to a $1.5 billion light rail expansion project from Culver City to downtown Santa Monica, Angelinos will now have passenger rail transit service to the west side. This is really about delivering a promise. I think a lot of people thought we couldn't do something like this in the car capital of America, but it's on time. The 6.6-mile .6 extension of the light rail line is expected to ease traffic on the congested west side. It completes the 15-mile expo line between downtown Los Angeles and Santa Monica. It's going to give tens of thousands of people every single day an opportunity to commute without being stuck in gridlock. This is a big hole that is filled in our transit system. We're getting closer to the point where you can get almost anywhere without having to get in your car. And I think once that happens, traffic is going to dramatically improve. The trains will run every 12 minutes each day. There are seven new stations, three with park and ride facilities. The smoothest, quickest 12 minutes from Culver City to Santa Monica I've ever had. This marks the first time passenger trains have run from downtown L.A. to the Pacific Ocean in six decades. I'm Rasha Goel for L.A. This Week. Now it'll take Metro riders about 45 minutes to get from downtown L.A. to Santa Monica. Well, the city of L.A. is hiring and wants U.S. veterans and other select groups to apply first. Gil Reyes reports on the mayor's executive directive to fill thousands of civil service jobs. The city braces for a shortage of workers. Within two years, nearly half of civilian employees hired by the city, like tree trimmers, will be eligible for retirement. At the same time, many positions remain unfilled following layoffs from the Great Recession. But now, a plan. Rebuilding that workforce, bringing services back to our constituents, and finally beginning to, to restore the kind of government service that our constituents deserve. L.A. City leaders gathered outside City Hall for the signing of Mayor Eric Garcetti's executive directive. It sets the goal of hiring 5,000 new civilian workers over the next three years, now that the recession is behind us. It also instructs city departments to prioritize the disadvantaged when hiring. Communities like our unsheltered, communities like formerly incarcerated Angelinos, uh, veterans, and our disconnected youth, those youth between 16 and 24 who are not in school but don't have jobs. The directive builds on the city's new contract with the coalition of L.A. city unions. They represent tree trimmers, 911 dispatchers, crossing guards, and so much more. Many of those positions were cut during the economic downturn of 2008. The executive directive seeks to restore many of those jobs. And I'm also very supportive of how this executive directive to managers emphasizes an attempt to move part-time workers to full-time whenever practical. That's something I've been calling us to, for us to change since I got here. The directive calls on nonprofits, universities, and religious groups to seek out those disadvantaged job seekers and refer them to positions. Outside City Hall, Gil Reyes for LA This Week. Outreach to help fill those city jobs will be conducted by groups like the Watts Gang Task Force and Inner City Struggle. While renovations continue at LAX as new airline routes are added to enhance the passenger experience, Raja Goel has more on the latest airline flying in. After a 22-year hiatus, Thomas Cook Airlines is now operating out of LAX. The airline offers a direct flight from northwestern England to the west coast. LAX recently celebrated the inaugural flight. Manchester is LAX's third United Kingdom with non-stop air service. The route will help meet the growing demand of travelers between our two cities that share cultural, academic, and economic ties that benefit both cities. And for example, every time the Thomas Cook aircraft lands here in Los Angeles, it injects at least a quarter million dollars every time, every landing, into the local economy. 
Thomas Cook Airlines will fly from Los Angeles to Manchester, England, offering a way for travelers to get into northwestern England faster. Normally I go through Heathrow and there's usually a four or five hour layover uh, just to get back to Manchester. So I've been waiting for this flight for like over 30 years. The service is fantastic. I love it and they, every, we keep coming back to them every year. Currently, Thomas Cook Airlines offers two flights a week and is a seasonal flight which will only operate until October, but it will return next spring and give passengers an opportunity to choose from more flight options. But it's very much the model of Thomas Cook Airlines to put on more service in the second season. Thomas Cook Airlines is the largest transatlantic airline out of Manchester. From LAX, I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Officials say Thomas Cook Airlines is the largest transatlantic airline to fly out of Manchester. While taking a few crucial steps could ensure better odds of survival for you and your family in a large-scale emergency. Anna Marcos shows us a South L.A. community is doing just that as the city takes part in America's annual Preparathon event. In a real-life mass disaster, chances are your community may see few of these guys, the real-life firefighters, and a lot more of these, CERTs, or Community Emergency Response Teams. Regular citizens like you and me, trained by L.A. firefighters to jump into action when disaster strikes. In a large-scale emergency, your infrastructure is going to be destroyed. Your, your water mains will be blown up in the street. Your roads will be impassable. It may be hours, days, or a week, and that's why we tell people, be prepared to be able to survive on your own. Volunteers in South L.A. got practice doing just that as the City of L.A.'s Emergency Management Department and residents teamed up to take part in America's Preparathon, a mass national event where volunteers run drills on what to do in an emergency. It's a simulated earthquake, and what we have here today, 7.8 magnitude earthquake. We know that our city has 4 million people in it, and our first responders can't come and rescue them right after a disaster. So neighbors took care of neighbors. They set up a triage and treatment area to take care of the dead and wounded, and they even set up an animal care center for stranded animals. That's where we really save lives, is the initial response. Officials say all residents, even those with no training, can help save lives if they practice the five steps to neighborhood preparedness. Identify an area in your neighborhood that you can adopt, such as your street or apartment building. Recruit a leader. Scout your area so you know where the dangers and hazards are in an emergency. Build a team with your family and neighbors and map out a plan for what to do when disaster strikes. It's not a matter of uh, if, but a matter of when. Uh, we have an earthquake of this magnitude. Uh, right now, USGS predicts that there's a 99% chance of a 6.7 or greater earthquake. It's really cool when you see a community take it upon themselves to uh, educate themselves. Officials say at least half of all residents are totally unprepared for what to do if a disaster were to hit. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. For more information on how you can get prepared, visit 5stepsla.com or ready.gov. Well, one city agency teams with the White House to help youth in the projects plug into the digital age. Gil Reyes has part one of a special report. Gil. Yes, Yana, the city agency that oversees this newscast, as well as LA City View Channel 35, has partnered with several entities once again to deliver computers to low-income families, this time targeting low-income housing communities throughout the city of Los Angeles. Christian Blankenship takes home his family's first ever home computer, and it's free. He and his younger brother live in the Rancho San Pedro housing project. But he went up to me just the other day talking about I can't read, I don't know how to read, you know. I don't know how to get on the internet, I don't know how to look up things. And This is a big opportunity for him, I'm going to set it home. I'm going to teach him all about it. He's going to do it in school. He's just because, you know, we live in projects, you know, like there's a lot of bad things that happen here. Many young people in this public housing facility by the L.A. waterfront struggle through life, struggle through school. One reason is the lack of computers in the home for schoolwork and other necessities. It is uh, super expensive right now, so I think it will be a good idea for this program to continue to um, strive. This program is called Connect Home. 
an effort by the Obama administration to provide free computers to kids and families in public housing. Families also received discounted internet access, around a hundred bucks for the hookup device. This provides four free years of broadband through Sprint. In the city of L.A., 500 families living in public housing have benefited since February. So we've gone to Ramona Gardens, we've gone to Nickerson Gardens, we've gone to Avalon, we've gone to Gonzag, now at Rancho San Pedro as well as Pico. The Housing Authority of the City of Los Angeles received the computers from the Our Cycle LA pilot program. Launched more than a year ago, Our Cycle took thousands of outdated city computers and instead of throwing them away, repaired them for disadvantaged families. The city's Information Technology Agency, or ITA, led this effort with support from L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti and City Council President Herb Wesson. In fact, Mayor Garcetti helped hand out around 800 computers to families in Koreatown and Baldwin Village during the initial rollout to uh, help the, uh, the low-income family individual to get connected to the Internet, to improve their quality of life, to help them get access to better education, health care. While also reducing environmental waste, as many of these computers, useless to the city after a systems upgrade, could have ended up in landfills. And there's another benefit, job creation. The city had hired the new nonprofit group Human IT to do the repairs. And since then, Human IT has grown, adding six full-time staffers to handle the increased workload. New clients include USC. Because of our Cycle LA, we've been able to get business um, from local companies and actually companies all across the country. We also got to teach a lot of 100 different volunteers as well as seven youth around Boyle Heights uh, the vocation of computer repair. And then this is just the, the, the last stage of it, which is giving it away to families, which is the best stage in my opinion. Like you said, Vital, it's a, a tool that everyone needs. I mean, I can't even explain how appreciated I am. I definitely appreciate whoever started this program, and I'll be down to volunteer for them too. Helping to bridge the digital divide. In San Pedro, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. Around 80 families from Rancho San Pedro alone received computers. While authorities close in on a major drug operation on Skid Row, a new alliance between the public and private sectors offers job opportunities for those with criminal records, and LADWP opens three public trails at Owens Lake. All these stories in City Beat. A major drug bust by the LAPD, local and federal agencies led to the arrests of 19 drug dealers for selling heroin, cocaine and methamphetamines on Skid Row. Wiretaps, surveillance and undercover officers were used in the year-long investigation. Almost $2 million, including $600,000 of $1 bills, was seized. Mayor Eric Garcetti joined Chief Charlie Beck to say the operation helped remove a large number of drug dealers who prey on the most vulnerable. This is about changing a neighborhood. This is one of the many steps that will have to be taken before we can make sure that the heart of this city as it is as pure as it can be. Mayor Eric Garcetti launched a Blue Ribbon Commission on Employment Equity, an alliance of private and public sector employers committed to providing opportunities for people who have been historically excluded from jobs that offer career advancement, including those individuals who have been formerly incarcerated. Commission members have agreed to voluntarily refrain from criminal record inquiries until a conditional offer of employment is extended, refrain from asking job applicants about their credit history, and actively work to develop recruitment and policies for populations that have been historically unemployed, including those with criminal records. And to give people those entry-level jobs on the way up on the ladder, whether it's that cleaning the, the floor and the toilets that eventually allows you to train solar installers, or whether it's here, somebody who can help us by fixing sidewalks and one day get a city pension and a middle-class job. It's an unprecedented opportunity. The Los Angeles Department of Water and Power recently joined officials to celebrate the grand opening and ribbon cutting of the Owens Lake Trails, which officials say aim to enhance public access, recreation, and wildlife habitat at Owens Lake while educating visitors about LADWP's dust control efforts on the lake bed. The Owens Lake Trails features three trail areas with a total of four miles of walking paths, overlook areas, and land art installations. 
The effort is part of LADWP's Owens Lake Dust Mitigation Program, initiated in 2001. It has mitigated 96% of dust emissions from Owens Lake to date, according to officials. Complete mitigation is expected by 2017. Well, it's out with the old and in with the new, as a new program is helping residents not only cut their energy use, but save some money, too. Rich Samuels has more. It's new, uh, good size, quieter. You know, it's clean, brand new. I like it. James Sebastian is happy about his brand new refrigerator, one of 177 new energy efficient units recently provided free of charge to residents at Fame Corporation's low-income housing. This will help low-income families to save at least $60 annually on their utility bills. The opportunity to create greener, more environmentally friendly apartment complexes grew out of Fame's involvement in LEWP's Community Partnership Program, which provides education on reducing energy and water usage to residents of the 8th Council District. What's so fantastic about this program is LADWP is really reaching out to low-income communities to be part of the conservation effort, but simultaneously they're helping those low-income individuals improve their quality of life and receive benefit from the community. The LADWP's Refrigerator Exchange Program partnered with ARCA, the Appliance Recycling Centers of America, to complete the replacement process. This is Rich Samuels for LA This Week. The new energy-efficient refrigerators use half as much electricity as older models. While a 5K run that'll have you covered in all the colors of the rainbow, tour a legendary music studio as it opens its doors to the public for the first time in six decades, and a day of music and games that's perfect for the whole family. All this in this week's Things to Do. Also known as the happiest 5K on the planet and the most colorful event this May, the Color Run in Los Angeles is taking place on Saturday, May 21st. The Color Run partners with a charity event at each location, and in Los Angeles, they are working with Back on My Feet, a nonprofit that uses running to help the homeless in changing their lives and Children's Hospital Los Angeles. So get your old white t-shirt ready and don't miss your chance to get covered in orange, pink, blue, and yellow paint on this exciting 5K run. What better way to give back and have fun? The event starts at Dodger Stadium on Saturday, May 21st. For more, visit thecolorrun.com. If you're into music production and have ever wondered how Capitol Studios, which has hosted recording artists such as Frank Sinatra to the Beastie Boys, makes its magic, Wonder no more. Created in 1956 and for the first time in 60 years, Capitol Studios is opening their doors to the public. This is a chance to hear stories and witness the place where many recording artists who have created your favorite tunes made their music. Tours will be held in the studio and there will also be a vinyl fair Saturday, May 21st. For more information, visit CapitalStudios.com. Calling all Southern California moms, Here's an event that is fun for the whole family. The third annual Great Big Family Play Day in Los Angeles only happens once a year and features a day full of face painting, games, crafts, and event meet and greets with your children's favorite characters. Grammy-nominated singer and songwriter Lisa Loeb will be performing in a nursery rhyme parade, and the day will also include hula hoop dancers and a number of performances. You won't want to miss this day full of music and family fun on Sunday, May 22nd at the Autry Museum of American West. The event starts at 9.30 a.m. and closes at 4. For details, visit greatbigfamilyplayday.com. And that's a look at some things to do. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kane. From all of us here at LA This Week, thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week.
If you're in an accident, just stay. Call 911. Help if you can. You might save someone's life. Obey the rules of the road. I'm Kevin from Chatsworth, offering you a taste of New Orleans since 1986. You're watching LA City View, Channel 35. Our city, our channel.
like your hair through rising fields of green grasses. Beyond it, I saw the dark ocean as the light deepened. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. If I could... I didn't even have to ask you to be quiet, so I appreciate that very much. It is Thursday, May 19th. I want to welcome you to the Los Angeles City Council, to the members. I want to apologize for starting... A little late, I had some business to attend to in the back. Um, if uh, Mr. Clerk, you'd please call the roll, we can uh, begin. Blumenfield, Bonner, Buscain, Osvaldo, Engler, Fuentes, Herstas, and Wizar, Corrats, Corian, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rue, Wesson, 15 members present, and a quorum, Mr. President. First order of business. Mr. President, item one is the continued consideration of the Budget and Finance Committee report relative to the mayor's proposed 2016-2017 budget for the city, related motions and resolutions. The public hearing was closed yesterday, May 18th. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Clerk. Before I turn this over to our budget chair, Mr. Paul Krikorian, I want to not only congratulate him for a phenomenal job on the budget, I want to thank every member of the Budget and Finance Committee for all of the hard work that you put in to being in a position to present us with a budget today. I have to acknowledge every member of the council, those that do not sit on the Budget and Finance Committee, because you were engaged in this process as well. And the more that we communicate, the more that we are all engaged, the better budget product I think a better budget product has been produced. I don't have the words or the ability to thank all of our staff from the CAO's office, CLA's office. I want to give a shout out to the mayor and to his office, city attorney, everyone who's worked on this. 
And to say to each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart, I am amazed that your hair is still black or dark brown, given all of the stresses that you guys had to go through and all of the hours that you spent putting this together. Because of you, we are a better council. Because of you, we are a better city. So I want to thank you for the work that you've done. At this time, if Mr. Krikorian is ready, sir, I'd like to uh, defer to you and let us uh, begin this process. And again, let me say this while I am looking directly into your eyes. I thank you very, very much. Uh, the citizens of this city should uh, consider themselves fortunate to have you at the helm where it relates to budget and finance items. With that said, Mr. Kokorian, the floor belongs to you. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for those entirely overly generous uh, comments. I appreciate it. But I do appreciate your recognizing the hard work of the Budget and Finance Committee. Um, this has been uh, the f finest Budget and Finance Committee, I think, that we've put together in a very long time, thanks to your appointments uh, of these members, uh, Mr. Wesson. And each and every one of my colleagues has done a magnificent job. Um, and I want to put a little bit of a finer point on what a magnificent job it's been, because um, I just I pulled up an editorial that Mayor Richard Reardon wrote for the Wall Street Journal on May 5th, 2010. And the first sentence of that editorial is, Los Angeles is facing a terminal fiscal crisis. Between now and 2014, the city will likely declare bankruptcy. That was from our former mayor in the Wall Street Journal. Well, we didn't declare bankruptcy. And I'm very pleased to tell you that the budget that you have before you today has the largest reserve in the history of the city of Los Angeles, more than 6 percent. The budget before you today has nearly $100 million in a rainy day fund, which can only be drawn upon when we have the next downturn, so that we have a cushion, so that we don't have to uh, have devastating cuts as we did over the last seven years when uh, we had the last fiscal collapse. Um, this is a uh, fiscally responsible budget that's also doing some pretty great things that we haven't had a chance to do during the time of this economic downturn. Most notably, uh, the commitment of $138 million for homeless services and prevention, uh, which is a, a monumental step forward, the first of many steps that will have to be taken, uh, but it is an important commitment and declaration, I think, of this one of the city's most important priorities. Um, we are investing in our public infrastructure. We're spending in this budget 60 percent more on public infrastructure than the city's fiscal policies require. So for the first time, we're, we're spending a, a very significant amount in pavement preservation, over 2,400 miles of pavement preservation, $31 million devoted to fixing sidewalks. Mr. Buscaino, thank you for your great work uh, with, with our committee on this. Um, this is the first time uh, we've, we've actually gone down the road of engaging in a robust sidewalk repair policy, $31 million. Um, $2 million to maintain medians, eight, over $8 million devoted to clean streets, to clean up alleys and street trash. Um, uh, nearly over two and a half million dollars for gra graffiti abatement. So we're doing a lot to improve our infrastructure, improve the quality of life in our neighborhoods. We've shown our commitment to public safety through this, and I'm so glad that our public safety chair, Mr. Englander, happens to also be the vice chair of budget and finance, uh, because um, we, we have been able to do so much in collaboration with the public safety committee uh, in helping to enhance the fire department for um, in, including beginning hiring, which we hadn't done for many years, hiring more firefighters. Um, this budget does does those things, but it also um, moves us in the direction of civilianization of civilian jobs uh, by making sure that people who are uh, sworn police officers and are capable of being out on the street protecting us are doing that 
instead of doing jobs that civilians could be doing. So uh, we, we're funding that in, in this budget as well. Um, we're committing ourselves to economic prosperity over uh, in, including our Office of Wage Standards, the new Office of Wage Standards, including investing in uh, the recommendations of the Ad Hoc Jobs Committee uh, to try to enhance uh, the development of new jobs here uh, in, in Los Angeles. And um, in terms of improvements to our neighborhood, many of, all of us, actually not many of us, all of us here on a daily basis from our constituents about things like tree trimming, about uh, alley cleanups, about um, the fact that um, we have cut through traffic and speeding in our neighborhoods and we need more speed humps. Uh, we need more historical preservation of buildings that, uh, pr that represent the character of our neighborhood. All of those programs are seeing enhancements uh, in this budget, including uh, planning positions for the neighborhood conservation and historic preservation overlays, um, more tree trimming crews, a new newly restored speed hump program, um, and uh, as I mentioned before, much more money for graffiti abatement uh, and so on. Um, I know that all of you are concerned about the many important social service programs that this city has been providing, primarily with federal funding through the Community Development Block Grants Program. And each year, um, many of those programs have faced extinction because of the, um, the outrageous reduction in federal funding for very, very important uh, priorities. Well, we're continuing to fund uh, the day labor sites in this budget with $750,000, AIDS programs, aging and health programs, our family source centers. Uh, we're preserving some of those things that um, the most vulnerable Angelinos depend on us uh, to provide. So um, there's a lot of important stepped positive steps forward in this budget and they're reflected in the documents that we'll be going through in a moment. Um, but I also just want to say that um, we're not entirely yet out of the woods. So while this is a positive story, it's not um, a story that doesn't have some cautionary notes as well. And it is it remains true that we continue to face a structural deficit in our out years. And that structural deficit is not likely to be erased uh, until four or five years from now, depending upon how disciplined we continue to stay on this, ro on this road that we've taken. So while this is good news and this is an opportunity for us to begin restoring services that have been cut so badly, um, I have to always temper that optimism with the reminder that we still haven't resolved, fully resolved, the structural deficit that this city has built up over the course of many, many years. Um, we're on the road to do, doing that, but it's not quite done. So I'm going to get into thank yous and such uh, uh, after we finish this process. Uh, but I do just want to um, walk us through this uh, a little bit. Um, we're going to ask the CLA in a moment to present the budget. Um, Remember, members, that what is before you is the report of the Budget and Finance Committee, which makes changes in the mayor's proposed budget. So if anything is not contained in our report, the mayor's budget stands as is. So it's kind of a sometimes a double negative uh, when we do that. So just keep that in mind as, as we're talking about that. Um, your motions are welcome. We have, I think, probably a stack of them already ready to go. Um, so when we're done with, with this process, we'll be considering motions. But I would ask again, Mr. President, that any motion that's presented today uh, or otherwise that has any impact on the budget, fiscal impact on the budget, uh, I would ask be referred to Budget and Finance for further consideration rather than voted upon uh, in connection with this budget. Um, so uh, Ms. So and, and Ms. Calfine are now going to go through the budget on a page-by-page -page basis, and uh, you all have it before you, so as you see anything that you would like to ask questions about or make a motion about or do anything else, just call it special. We'll note it, and otherwise we'll just go ahead and go through until we're concluded, and then we'll consider all the motions uh, at the end. Let me see if I have anything else. Um, I think that 
that about covers it for now, Mr. President. So if I may just go ahead and uh, turn it over to our chief legislative analyst, Sharon Sell. Please begin. Um, good morning. So you have the Budget and Finance Committee report before you. Uh, we will go by um, the recommendations page by page. If you can refer to attachment one, there are a total of 150 recommendations of the Budget and Finance Committee for you to consider. Uh, after we, we will go page by page, Karen will uh, walk you through page by page. Any items, we'll call special. Uh, Put those on the board, and then uh, we would ask the council to take a vote on that page of, of the items that are not called special so that we can move those along. So we'll start with that process. After we complete that, uh, we will go through um, the motions, which will soon be distributed to you. Okay. <clears throat> Good morning, Mr. President and members. Uh, before you is the Budget and Finance Committee report on the mayor's proposed 2016-17 budget. It, um, it is broken into three sections. The first section is the summary of all the uh, discussion that took place during the Budget and Finance Committee hearings. And as um, Ms. So mentioned, there, there are two recommendation sections. The attachment one is the recommendations that actually modify the mayor's proposed budget. And the an, an attachment A is are the reports that were um, recommended as part of that budget process. So we can go, begin with the recommendations, or if you prefer, we can do what I would recommend is we take up the reports in one batch. We can either do that at the very beginning, or we can do it that at the end. It's, it's uh, your preference. What, what do you recommend? We can do them right now if you like. We can, th those would be attachment A recommendations uh, R1 through R113. I don't, why don't we do that? Let's prepare to vote on, again, what did you say, R1 through R113? Correct. Let us open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Mr. Englander? Yeah, just uh, one minor request on R57, if we could just also uh, refer that to Public Safety Committee. R57. Page 8. Without objection, I think that's cool. That's fine. So anyway, do we get the machine? Mr. Clerk, can we vote on this? N Mr. President, uh, Apparently, it's taking a moment to load. If you could. Just bear with us. Let's get our computer into gear. Yes. Mr. President, we're ready. Okay, so now we'll vote uh, on the items. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Karen, back to you. Okay. Right, no, I can just redirect you to uh, the recommendations beginning at attachment one. So the first page, uh, these are recommendations one through four. Members, one through four. Okay, let's prepare to vote on these items. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. On page two, these are recommendations five through nine. Okay, on, on page two, any specials? Okay, let's prepare to vote on page two, items five through nine. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Page three, recommendations 10 through 12. Any specials? Then let's vote on page three. Open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Fifteen ayes. Continue. Page four, recommendations 13 through 23. Page four, 13 through 23. Let's uh, prepare to vote. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Fifteen ayes. Continue. Page 5, recommendations 24 through 35. Okay, now we're on page 5. 
Please open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Page 6, recommendations 36 and 37. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Page 7, recommendations 38 through 42. Okay, page 7, 38 through 42. Open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Page 8, recommendations 43 through 47. Okay, let's vote on those as well. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Move on. Page 9, recommendations 48 through 54. Okay, we're now, Mr. Wizar. 54B, please. 54B, we're going to hold at the request of Mr. Wizar. We can vote on the remaining. So let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Page 10, recommendations 55 through 59. Let's vote on those items. Let's open the roll. Close the row and tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Page 11, recommendations 60 through 66. We're on page 11? Yes. Open the roll. Close the row, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Page 12, recommendations 67 through 73. Okay, page 12, 67 through 73. We can... Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, vote on this. Open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Page 13, recommendations 74 through 80. Open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Page 14, recommendations 81 through 83. Okay, let's vote on that section. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Page 15, recommendations 84 through 89. Okay, members, we're on page 15, 84 through 89. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Page 16, recommendations 90 through 93. We're on page 16. Let's uh, open the roll, Madam Clerk. Close it. Tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Page 17, recommendations 94 through 100. Ms. Martinez. President, I just have a, a technical amendment on item 98, and it should read Operations Valley Bureau of Human, Human Trafficking and Prostitution Detail. Well, let's um, vote on that as amended. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Page 18, recommendations 101 through 106. Let's prepare to vote. Madam Clerk, open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Page 19, recommendation 107. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Page, page 20, recommendations 108A through E. All right. Open the roll. Clo well, hold one second. Mr. Buscay. If I may, Mr. President, hold on 108. Uh, nothing has been changed on this item from the committee. I just had a question uh, based on the mayor's recommendation on this item. So you want to hold, hold a, 108. A through E? All yes. of it? Okay. So Thank let's, you. we'll hold 108. Continue. On, <clears throat> excuse me. On page 21, this is recommendations 108F through L. Okay, let's prepare to vote on this. Let's open the roll. Did you want? Okay, so again, open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. 
Page 22, recommendations 108M through R. Okay, let's vote on that. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Let's go move on now to uh, page 23, right? Yes, correct. Page Let's 23, recommendation 108S and 109 through 117. Okay, I see no specials. Let's vote on this. Open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Page 24, recommendations 118 through 123. Mr. O'Farrell. Mr. President, please hold item 123, A through E. 123, we will hold at the request of Mitchell O'Farrell. So let's prepare to vote on the remainder. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Page 25, recommendations 124 through 132. Let's vote on these items. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Page 26, recommendations 133 through 142. Let's prepare to vote. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. That brings us where? Page 27, recommendations 143 uh, through 150. Okay, members, let's vote on uh, page 27, 143 through 150. Madam Clerk, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Okay. And that completes the report. So now you can go back to uh, items called special. Okay. Uh, Mr. Buscaino, I believe the... Uh, well, who called... Mr. Weezar, was it you, 54B? Yes, sir. Colleagues, and quickly, this item adds $100,000 for contractual services to support GSD in the sale of surplus property for housing and facilities for the homeless. And I just want to highlight uh, my support for this, but I also want to acknowledge that we still have a long process to take in order to realize the $47 million uh, identified through this process for supporting the $138 million that we've set aside to support homelessness. I've introduced a motion today to further clarify the process to make sure we are on top of uh, this process and that we go from the preliminary list of potential sites uh, to actually get some real sites in place. But it's also important to get community input and to have the GSD explain to us and the public what the process will be like so that we get to we realize the $47 million. So not to mention the $20 million in housing linkage fees that have yet to be materialized in order for us to achieve $138 million. So uh, I just want to highlight that we have a long way to go in this process to um, sell these surplus properties, uh, work with the community to identify the appropriate sites, and we need further clarification from this, from GSD, and that's what my motion uh, that I submitted today is about. Thank you. Okay, so let's vote on, so would, would that be an amending motion? So, no, it's just, uh, it's just a, a, a comment on that, just to clarify a motion I submitted related to this item. Thank you, okay. sir. Okay, so now we can vote on it. Let's open the roll, close the roll. What? No. So, Mr. President? Yes. So, Mr. Wiesar's motion will be included in the packet. It will be circulated in just a moment. Uh, the item before you, I believe Mr. Wiesar is uh, accepting it to move forward as is, and then the uh, clarification will be coming forward in a motion that will be presented uh, shortly. Yes, Mr. Krikori. That, Mr. President, because that item was called special, we have to vote on this page as it's written. Um, but the motion that Mr. Weezer mentioned will be included in the packet. So we do have to now vote on this page as it's written. Okay, then let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Okay, so that should bring us to Mr. Buscaino, page 2108A through E. Yes, uh, falling in line with Mr. Weezer's concerns about surplus property. Um, now, just for clarification purposes, the funds generated um, from the purchase or sale, rather, of surface proper, property is proposed to go to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. That's correct. 
Now, um, those dollars are generated from the sale of sur surplus properties in each of our respective council districts. Will those those dollars go back into the specific district that the surface, surplus surplus property is, is being sold on? At I, I, I don't believe that that the, the guidelines for how those uh, funds would be used has been developed yet. I think uh, so. There are no guidelines in place. So that, uh, right, and 108B addresses uh, the creation of some guidelines, which would then inform uh, an ordinance that would would create the affordable housing trust fund. Uh, the recommendation here is to take. Uh, to delete the recommendation from the mayor's budget and allow that to go to the policy committee for some discussion about how that Understood. would be created. Okay, so that still needs to be crafted as far as how those dollars, once the surplus, pro surplus, surplus property is sold, if those dollars are going to go back to that respective council district. So as proposed by the mayor, there are eight properties uh, that have been proposed for sale. Um, they're actually included in the CAO supporting documents. And it is the intent that of those properties, of course, they have to get to the dollar figure, but of those properties that they would be sold and the proceeds in their entirety, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but in their entirety would be placed in this trust fund. Um, and these properties, uh, Possible properties are located in CDs 1, 7, 8, 11, and 14. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Do you want to add anything? We got? Sir, if I could just add that as part of the discussion, both at the uh, home, Homeless and Poverty Committee as well as Budget and Finance, there has been a discussion that the, the, the value of those properties be um, committed to the same communities from which they came. But again, as as my colleagues indicated, that policy will be taken up separate, and there will be a discussion about uh, exactly how that would work. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Okay. Now uh, we can vote on that uh, item. So that's what? Page 20. Uh, uh, Mr. Bonnet. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to add a quick comment to that, colleagues. There's eight properties listed. Is that correct? Yes. I, I just wanted to clarify that these are just the first set of properties that we're considering. Yes. That a key part of both the city and the county homelessness strategies was to use city-owned properties uh, to build affordable housing or, or homeless housing. Uh, and I'm very happy to have a number of properties in my district on this first list. Uh, but the goal really is to keep expanding this list and to keep using these assets so that we keep adding more affordable housing throughout the city. Mr. Harris Dawson. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chair, members. I just uh, want to indicate to everybody that our, our commitment around homelessness is um, th this budget is essentially a down payment on that. And so we have both the linkage fees and the sale of surplus property, among other things that uh, our commitment is contingent on. So it's going to uh, require diligence and consistent work by uh, the Homelessness and Poverty Committee as well as the Budget Committee to actually get us where we need to be uh, with regard to our commitment around homelessness. Okay, Mr. Krikorian. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to follow up on that point a little bit because um, Go right ahead. this is such a big step forward that we're taking in making this commitment for homelessness, I think it bears um, repeating a number of times that the council has not finished its work on policy development. And the work that Mr. Harris Dawson and Mr. Cedillo are doing in their committees and, and otherwise, that still has a long way to go in, in determining how this commitment is actually implemented. And we're budgeting for it now, but this is going to continue to be a work in progress and there will probably be revisions within this budget and reappropriations and, and otherwise throughout the year as the, as the policy committees weigh in with their expertise. So this does not presuppose uh, that the council is already committing to the specific uh, programmatic elements of this. Um, it's all subject to further review as it should be by our policy committees. Gotcha. So let's vote on this. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Now I'd like to recognize Mr. O'Farrell on item uh, 123, I believe it is. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, uh, I learned through the mayor's budget proposal that there was uh, an intended ex uh, uh, expenditure of MECLA funding for various projects along the Los Angeles River. Um, all of the goals laudable, uh, especially the goal of acquiring parcel G2. Uh, which the city has had as a goal for many, many years. Um, 
and then the associated cleanup costs, which are unknown at this time. Um, item B is in relation to MECLA funding and financing for a future North Atwater multimodal bridge. Um, colleagues, I support the instructions and am uh, appreciative of the instructions that the Budget and Finance Committee made to uh, recommend to go back to the committee uh, for a full vetting of these two items. I am particularly thankful of you, Sharon So, for your uh, instructions and wise uh, advice uh, in terms of our financial and fiduciary res responsibility as it relates to MECLA funding. And just to know that MECLA funding can be allocated at any time of the year. Now, I understand, I've come to understand that the timing of this is very sensitive for a variety of reasons, with state funding uh, that is uh, sensitive, time sensitive, uh, and other funding uh, to help us reach the goals. The, good, the reason this is so good that it's uh, referred to my committee is because the following issues are completely unclear and not yet addressed. The purchase and sales agreement uh, as it relates to parcel G2, including the cost of remediation, unclear. Uh, results of the draft environmental impact review, which will be made uh, uh, public in the months to come. Uh, and then uh, the decision to remediate where and how these determinations have yet to be made. Uh, in terms of the acquisition of G2 and its cleanup. In terms of uh, item B, uh, the bridge, which was um, uh, originally pitched uh, through a donation many years ago uh, at, in, at around the $5 million range, uh, three years ago it had escalated to $8 million, and now I understand it's escalated to just under 12. So there are lots of questions about the funding of this bridge, and. Uh, I will dial down in my committee on exactly where the funding gaps are and how this money is um, uh, planned is to be utilized and when and how. Uh, and these questions must be answered. And it's just our responsibility to do so. These, uh, these allocations must be vetted through a transparent uh, process through the committee work of this council. So I support uh, and am gratified that these in the footnotes were made very clear to be referred back to my committee. And I look very forward uh, to hearing these in an expedited process so we can figure this out and uh, figure out how to acquire parcel G2 so we can uh, make it uh, what we want it to be in terms of uh, the future revitalization of the river as a new amenity that we've all wanted for years and years to come. And I look forward to working with all of my colleagues and the public to help make that happen. Uh, so thank you again, and especially Ms. So, thank you. Mr. Sadia. Let me, let me echo the, um, the thank yous. Uh, Sharon, Matias, uh, Arturo in my office, uh, Mr. President. Uh, for a while I thought he had left my office and was only working on this. I had to ask him if he still worked for us. Um, uh, Mr. Krikorian helping us. Uh, Mr. Krikorian, I'm a... I'm a praising you, <laughs> uh, for helping us reconcile this and work out the nuances of this. This is really very exciting because all of us went to Washington, all of us talk about it, but it's the, this type of hammering at the details, uh, this laborious work that really uh, is the first steps towards uh, this vision, realizing this vision that all of us have about this. Uh, river and its impact uh, from the most northern part to the most southern part. This is how this gets done. And so I thanks to everybody who was engaged in this process over the last few months. And thanks for letting Arturo return back to my office. So. Okay, thank you. Let's prepare to vote. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Mr. President, I yes. believe that completes the committee report. So it brings us to, I think, our first packet. You have your first packet of motions before you. Uh, okay. We have pack, uh, motions number 1 through 14. Uh, motion number 1 is a Krikorian motion that would uh, provide a reserve fund loan uh, for the purposes of uh, cash flow uh, for the consolidated plan. 
It would also add a regular authority to the Department of Transportation that was inadvertently deleted. And it would add uh, authority for a deputy director of planning who would serve as the executive officer and with instructions to the CAO to accommodate any necessary commensurate salary adjustments. Uh, this motion has no impact on the general fund. Okay. I just, Mr. Krikorian, I want to know what you suggest. And I also uh, want to give uh, some of the offices a few more moments sure. so that they can review these. But how are, what, what do you suggest on this? Um, well, uh, as I was the mover, uh, I... <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you didn't change your mind. I, I and, I, and look who seconded this it. Item, uh, <laughs> Mr. President. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I recommend approval of, of motions numbers one, two, and three. Um, and if you want to take a few minutes so that people have an opportunity to look at it, um, that's fine, too. Um, and then I think we're going to have some more packets coming after this, but um, hopefully those will be ready by the time we get through this packet. Okay. Mr. Koretz. Yes, on on uh, Section 3, I just wanted to clarify whether the... Deputy Director of Planning position will be an exempt position. It, it could be. Um, usually, the there's two deputies uh, approved for exemption in every department. Uh, but given that uh, city planning already has two exempt authorities, uh, this additional one would have to go through the process of uh, getting a separate exemption uh, that would require both mayor and council approval. Okay. Okay, Mr. Uh, Krikorian? We just asked for an I vote on motion number one. Okay, so let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue, Ms. So. Uh, motion number two is a proposal to provide uh, additional funding for homelessness support uh, in the mayor's office, uh, also to provide some additional support for uh, gang reduction activities and community services in the council, and further uh, instruction to the CAO to present uh, after July 1 a reserve fund loan for the CalGRIP uh, grant program. Uh, these funds will be reimbursed upon receipt of grant funds. Uh, this will be accomplished through a decrease in the workers' compensation uh, line item in the budget. Uh, that, that line item is approximately $160 million, and uh, identified savings uh, would fund these items uh, in motion number two. Okay, so uh, let's vote on this item as well. Let's open Mr. Buscaino. If I may, Mr. President, on the $500,000 allocation on, in the motion before us, what would that be uh, dedicated to, do we know? It, it's undesignated at this point. There is a line item within the general city purposes for uh, council district community services, and so it's undesignated uh, to be designated uh, subsequent to the budget process. It's going to come back to this body, I understand. Okay, thank you. Do you want to see the second? Okay, let's uh, vote on this. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Sharon, why don't we move to motion number three? Uh, motion number three is uh, would amend the proposed budget to instruct the Information Technology Agency and Planning Department to report on funding needs uh, to implement the uh, Information Technology Infrastructure for Planning Department. Uh, this is as part of the uh, community plan update process. Okay. No so, impact on the general fund. All right. On this item, Please open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Motion number four is a proposal to amend uh, the mayor's proposed budget to add resolution authority without funding in the Department of Cultural Affairs for one senior project coordinator focused on neighborhood cultural planning and vitality. Uh, no impact to the general fund. This is an unfunded position. Okay, well then let's vote on this. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Let's move to number five. Motion number five is a uh, instruction to the CAO to report on funding an Office of Construction Coordination, uh, which would provide 
private and public activities uh, to coordinate those activities uh, overseen by the Bureau of Engineering, uh, Department of Transportation, and or Planning Department. Uh, preliminary estimates uh, are at $318,000. This is an instruction to report, so at this time there is no general fund impact. Okay, so let's vote on this one as well. Mr. Rue, we're going to vote on this. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Motion number six is an instruction to the CAO to report on funding options uh, for the computer-aided dispatch system requested by the fire department. This was a $2 million request by the fire department. Um, this is uh, no impact to the general fund at this time. It is a report back. It uh, should be noted that there are uh, potential funding uh, av availability in the unappropriated balance for the 16-17 proposed budget. Okay, so on this item, let's open the roll as well. Let's close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Motion, motion number seven and is instruction to the CAO to report on options for uh, a resolution authority and funding for the controller's special investigator uh, focused on fraud, waste, and abuse. This is an instruction to report uh, no impact on the general fund. Okay, let's uh, vote on this item as well. Open the roll, please. Close it, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Uh, motion number eight is a um, proposal to recognize revenue from the Marlton Square settlement and to appropriate funding for the R-Cycle LA and Project Save in Council District 9. This would actually increase the budget by $467,000 in newly identified receipts and would add two new projects to the general city purposes budget. Uh, the net impact is uh, zero impact to the general fund. Okay, so let's vote on this one. Members, let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Motion number nine is an instruction to the Bureau of Sanitation to report on the Lifeline Reimbursement Program. Um, the reduction that's uh, included in the Budget and Finance Committee report, as well as the basis for the reduction, current and projected subscribership, and a summary of the latest validation process. Um, this is an instruction to report no impact on the general fund. Okay, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Motion number 10 is an instruction to the CAO to report uh, to the Homelessness and Poverty Committee on the status of identifying city properties proposed for sale for use for housing facilities for the homeless. Uh, this report uh, should also present the anticipated site selection process. We discussed that uh, briefly, but um, this would be a further report, uh, no impact to the general fund. Ms. Martinez. I'd like to request that the report also be referred to entertainment and facilities. Mr. Sadia. That's interesting. Um, this is very important. I, I applaud the um, uh, leadership of, of Mr. Wezar in, in the doubling up on, on the comments of Mr. Bonin. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like this report also to uh, be vetted through Housing Committee. Okay, without objection, let's prepare to vote. Let's open the, the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. A motion number 11 is an amendment to the proposed budget to move the Human Relations Commission in its entirety from the Department of Housing and Community Investment uh, Department to the Department on Disability and direct the CAO with the assistance of City, city Attorney to prepare the documents necessary to effectuate this move. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Krikorian, do we want to send this one to committee for a bit? Uh, yes. 11? Yes. So we, why don't we do that? That should be referred to budget and finance. So without objection on item 11, motion 11, that'll be the order. Continue, Ms. So. Yes, uh, motion number 12 is an amendment to instruct the CAO to report to the Arts, Parks, and River Committee and the Budget and Finance Committee with funding options to enable the Mountains Recreation Conserv uh, Conservation Authority to provide permanent ranger service along the LA River. This is an instruction to report and no impact to the general fund. Okay, let's uh, open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Okay, lucky number 13. 
Lucky number 13 is uh, an amendment to add a footnote to the implementation of the public right-of-way cleanup ca uh, campaign line item uh, in the unappropriated balance um, to ensure that no funds are spent until adequate reports are received on the matter. So this would be adding uh, a footnote uh, that it would need to come back to Council for uh, further action prior to expenditure. Mr. Buscaino. Yeah, I, I want to recognize and thank Mr. O'Farrell for uh, putting this motion forward. Um, just a couple questions on um, why the implementation of the right-of-way cleanup was not given directly to sanitation and placed in the UB, especially when we recently approved a, a new 5611 um, last June and the new and improved one a few months ago. In fact, we approved 5611 the day after we approved the um, comprehensive sidewalk repair program. So um, it's great to see the $31 million expenditure in fixing our sidewalks, but yet we make, need to be ensure that our public, spaces, our public spaces are accessible. So, you know, I just wanted to get some clarification why that wasn't given directly to, I mean, there's a, there's a game plan to have four dedicated teams throughout the cities. I'm just kind of stumped and scratching my head on it. The CAO and uh, we're looking at each other because this was actually in the mayor's proposed budget. I imagine that the reason why it's in the unappropriated balance is because uh, the protocols of this are still being worked out. Until the protocols have been established, it's in the unappropriated balance pending that report. And once those protocols come back to council and are approved, that the money would be um, moved to the appropriate departments. Very good. Looking That's forward correct. to that. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Let's uh, vote on this item as well. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Yes. Uh, motion number 14 is a proposed amendment to add resolution authority without funding for two deputy city attorney positions within the employment litigation division. These are unfunded positions and no have, will have to, would have no impact to the general fund. Okay, let's uh, open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Okay, uh, Ms. So, I just received the second packet. Maybe we can take a break for about five minutes so that people can are, are review this. Okay. All right, so we'll be a five minute recess.
members to return to their seats. If I can say, we'll go back into session. Chair, the members return to their work locations. Okay, Miss uh, So, we have packet number two. Do you want to begin with that? Uh, yes, uh, packet okay. number two is motions number 15 through 24. I do wish to mention that there is one more small packet coming out, uh, possibly four more motions. Okay. So motion number 15 is a proposal to amend the uh, budget to provide funding for the construction of a new traffic light at the Fillmore Street and Arlita Avenue. The proposal is to de decrease a line item within the Proposition C budget, reducing the LED replacement modules by 300000 and adding a new signal construction, Fillmore Arlita um, oh. Avenue. Mr. Kukorian. Mr. President, I'd ask that... that, uh, that Motion 15 be referred to budget and finance, please. Okay, so without objection, that will be the order on motion number 15. Uh, Ms. So, please continue. Motion number 16 is a proposal to provide funding in the Capital Improvement Expenditure Program physical plant for the design and in environmental work on the White Point Landslide Paseo Del Mar project in the amount of $2 million. Uh, this funding would come from the Reserve Fund at this point and would have an impact to the General Fund. So, Mr. Kokorian, it's my understanding that you would prefer to have this motion referred yes, sir. to committee as well? So, so ordered. Item 17. Item number 17 is a proposal to provide funding for the On Avalon project in Wilmington by increasing contractual services in the Department of Recreation and Parks and the uh, Board of Public Works Office of Community Beautification. Uh, the total amount of funding provided would be $900,000. Uh, this would be coming from the Reserve Fund and would have an impact to the General Fund. Okay, we will refer this one as well. Without objection. Continue. Uh, motion number 18 is a proposal to transfer to the unappropriated balance uh, funding and positions for the expansion of the Bureau of Sanitation Trash Receptacle Program. Uh, these funds are currently in the Bureau of Sanitation's budget. Uh, this proposal would move those funds to the unappropriated balance pending further action by the Council. Okay, I just received a uh Acknowledgement from the chair that we should move forward on this one. So on item motion 18, let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Let's move to item 19. Um, motion number 19 is a uh, proposed amendment to add resolution authority without funding for two deputy city attorney, two positions in the city attorney's office for workers' compensation. Uh, no funding is uh, recommended here, so it's no impact to the general fund. It would only impact if these positions are filled. Okay, so then uh, let's move forward with the approval of this uh, item. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. That moves us to item... Motion number 20 okay. is a proposal to amend uh, the budget to restore one senior management analyst to position in the Office of Finance for the Revenue Management Division. No funding is recommended here. No impact to the general fund unless the position is filled later in the year. Okay, let's uh, vote to approve this one as well. Uh, let's open the roll, close the roll... Tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Motion number 21 is a request to instruct the fire department with the assistance of the CAO to report on options for funding uh, apart from grants. The 12 positions included in the budget without funding for an engine company uh, at, at fire station number 9. It should be noted that uh, this instruction was included uh, as part of the reports that was previously adopted. Uh, so adopting uh, motion 21 would be consistent with that as well. Okay. So let's uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Uh, 
Yes, motion number 22 is a proposal to instruct the Bureau of Sanitation and CAO to report on the funding needed to maintain the current service levels of uh, Operation Healthy Street and funding that would be required to implement this program in downtown Los Angeles and in Venice. Um, this report does ask to consider uh, some of the funding in the unappropriated balance to uh, support this. This is uh, an instruction to report and has no impact to the general fund. Okay, let's vote to uh, on this one as well. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Yes. Motion 23 is a proposal to uh, um, provide additional funds for the uh, Board of Public Works Clean and Green Program. The proposal is to add $500,000 to the Board of Public Works for this program. The only source of funding for this item would be the reserve fund, and therefore there would be an impact to the general fund. Okay, so without objection, we'll refer this back to committee as well. Continue. Uh, motion number 24 is a uh, proposal to instruct the CAO with the assistance of General Services Department and Recreation and Parks to report on funding options and the process for acquisition and park development of a .866 acre parcel in Sherman Oaks, uh, which has been identified as a prime location for a new park. This is an instruction to report no impact to the general fund. Thank you. Let's uh, vote on this item as well. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Members, this is a, a call, a all but last call for uh, motions if you want to have them submitted. Do we have an, any other packets that are ready at this time? Um, we need just a few moments. There are three more motions in process right now. And, of course, we have the closing motions of A and B that will also be included in that packet to the extent that there are no additional requests that come in. Okay, so since that would only be a very short delay, we will now be entertained by Mr. Buscaino from the great 15th District. <laughs> he will sing Sinatra songs until we get our next packet of motions. I, I'd like to call the question. No. <laughs> Second. Okay, well, why don't we just wait a, a bit and then we'll deal with these additional motions. Yes, Mr. Uh, Gregorian. Um, while we're waiting for those additional motions, I would just like to make a request to the CAO. Um, there have been a number of these motions that have been approved today, and probably more will come, involving uh, the addition of unfunded resolution authority positions. Uh, obviously, those have no immediate impact on the budget. They would only have a, a impact if filled. But what I would request is that um, through the uh, FSR process, if you would please report back on the status of those, of all of those unfunded positions that are being added today, um, and uh, whether they've been filled, what their budgetary impact may be, so that we can consider that in budget and finance in, in the council through the course of the FSR process. Got it. Yeah.
looked like your hair through rising fields of green grasses. Beyond it,
Members, the packets have been distributed. You may want to begin your review. We will start shortly in about a minute. So again, the packets have been delivered. Review them. We will be starting shortly, really shortly. Okay, uh, members and Mr. Kukorian, why don't we uh, begin? Sharon, uh, why don't you uh, begin going through the latest packet of motions? Yes, Mr. President. Or Ms. So, would you please do that? <laughs> Mr. President, um, last packet of motions is before you. Uh, there are six motions included. Motion number 25 is a request to instruct the CAO with the assistance of the General Services Department and Recreation Parks Department to report on funding options and the process for acquisition park development for uh, the Arlita Avenue, Wicks Street, Sharp Avenue, Phase 3C park development as well as phase 3D remainder of park development. This is an instruction to report and no impact to the general fund. Okay, so why don't we vote to approve that? Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Motion number 26 is a request to instruct the uh, fire department with the assistance of the CAO to report on options for funding the restoration of an engine company at fire station 92, including any position authorities that would be needed. This is an instruction to report uh, no impact to the general fund and, and just to note that there is funding in the unappropriated balance uh, that could be used uh, in the future to fund this. Okay. Then uh, let's move forward with adoption. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Continue. Motion number 27 is a proposal to add resolution authority without funding for one fiscal system specialist two, one senior management analyst two, and one special investigator two for the fraud, waste, and abuse prevention uh, program in the controller's office. Uh, these positions would be added uh, without funding. There's also a request to upgrade one senior assist, uh, system, fiscal system specialist one to a fiscal system specialist two, and the upgrade of one senior systems analyst one to a senior system analyst to for the uh, payroll system risk mitigation. Now, it should be noted that uh, upgrades are subject to the approval of the CAO and would need to go through that process. Mr. Kokorian. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I think uh, one of the positions that's indicated in here, at least one of the positions, may already be duplicative of a previous motion that Mr. Rue uh, brought. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. It's it doesn't matter, I suppose, if it's duplicative, but just uh, wanted to make that observation. But um, it, the final uh, sentence of the motion provides for upgrades of two positions. Um, would those not have a 
fiscal impact if we upgrade the positions? Um, yes, they would, um, but it would need to go through the CAO process of reallocation to upgrade it to a higher pay grade. So to the extent that there is a uh, upgrade to those positions, then yes, there would be a fiscal impact, but it hasn't even gone through that process yet. Um, any upgrades of positions could actually happen at any time. Um, they could be submitted to the CAO for review. It doesn't necessarily need to be done as part of the budget process. Right. Um, so to the extent that there is an upgrade, you are correct, sir, that there would be an impact if they are approved. Okay. And, and what we do is we look at it in context of other similar positions throughout the city to make sure there's no in inconsistency citywide. Okay. Uh, in that event, uh, Mr. President, I'd ask that that motion be referred uh, to the committee. Okay. So then without objection, that'll be the order. Let's move on. Uh, Mr. President, the uh, next two motions are motions A and B, and these are the final motions relative to instructing our offices to prepare the budget resolution as well as to make any corrections or adjustments necessary. Uh, as, as the council knows, um, the formal adoption of the budget is through the budget resolution. Uh, the CAO, the CLA, and the city attorney's office will be working on that upon adoption today of the recommendations, and we will be bringing back uh, to you for adoption the actual budget resolution, and we expect that to to be uh, sometime next week. Okay, so should we vote on these separately, A I, and B? I defer to the clerk okay. on that. Okay, then that's what we'll do. So we have before us now motion A. Let us open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Now before us is motion B. Let us open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Back to you, Ms. So. And there is one final motion um, before you, that, that, Mr. Bonin. Mr. Bonin. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. So. Uh, colleagues, we have a motion here today uh, that I wish was my idea, um, but it wasn't. Uh, Jennifer Rivera of CD1 suggested it. Uh, she used to work for Bill Rosendahl with me, and she suggested it would be a great idea for us to uh, dedicate this budget to Bill Rosendahl and his memory. And there are years in which that probably wouldn't be a very suitable tribute to Bill because there are budgets that he wouldn't have liked and he would have thought were real stinkers. Uh, so we're not doing this just because Bill recently passed, but because this is a budget I think Bill would really, really like. Uh, he'd be excited that we're finally doing some civilianization of the LAPD. He'd be very excited that we're restoring positions for historic preservation overlay zones and, and stuff like that. He would be very, very happy uh, that we're taking care of seniors uh, and day laborers, uh, our family source centers. Um, and uh, he would be very happy, Mr. Krikorian, uh, that we have an historic reserve fund. Uh, he'd be very happy with how fiscally prudent this budget is. But more than anything else, Bill's heart would be swelling today, and he's looking down, beaming uh, at us at the investment that this city has made in addressing homelessness in the city of Los Angeles. It was uh, an issue that he was singularly focused on for eight years. It was an issue that he continued to talk to me about regularly until he died. He, wouldn't, he couldn't have been happier, and he couldn't have been more proud of what we're doing uh, than, than what we're doing today with this budget. And um, I want to thank the mayor for making the budget recommendation, Mr. Santana and all the staff who helped make it happen, and all of you, particularly the Budget Committee and the Homelessness and Poverty Committee, that, that crafted that budget, because um, Bill is looking down, and he is saying great, 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 for sure. So thank you. <laughs> Okay, why don't we vote on this great, 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 great Bill uh, Rosendahl budget. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Fifteen ayes. Mr. Clerk, what's before this body? Mr. President, the desk is clear. At this time, I w again, let me thank everyone, but I'd like to acknowledge uh, uh, Mr. Krikorian. I'm sure you have some special words, but again, uh, on behalf of the council, we thank you for your stewardship, your leadership, 
through the, the some very challenging times. I think I can see the light by the, the at the end of the tunnel, and a lot of that is directly attributed to you. With that said, everybody, let's give our budget chair a round of applause. <laughs> job well done. Mr. Krikorian, the floor is yours. And I like making you get like it. I like, I like it when you say no. <laughs> Thank, you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for absolutely embarrassing me before I'm about to speak. I appreciate that very much. Um, I just need to say, as I said at the outset, um, what an outstanding process this has been, thanks to uh, the members of the Budget and Finance Committee. I want to thank Mr. Englander, Mr. Bonin, Mr. Blumenfield, Mr. Kretz. Um, exceptional, detailed work that they've done over the, not just in this budget process, but through the course of the year in preparing us to get to this point. And um, we spent over 40 hours of committee hearings just considering this budget. and. Um, heard from almost, I think, almost 200 public speakers. Um, it was a, a really effective process thanks to the, the commitment and thoroughness and um, uh, uh, skill of these uh, committee members and their staff. And I want to also uh, recognize Nicole Bernson with Mr. Englander's office, uh, Lori McLennan with Mr. Bonin's office, Dave Hirsch uh, with Mr. Kretz's office, and John Popach with Mr. Uh, Blumenfield's office, and all of their staffs, because everybody on, on our staff contributes to the budget process. Um, and of course, in my team, uh, Matt Hale has headed up the budget effort um, since I've been chair. And I want to especially thank Matt for the great work that he's done as well as my chief of staff, Irina Brunosian, and, and all of my policy team and everybody else in, in the CD2 team who's done such a, a terrific job. Um, Mr. President, we couldn't do this work uh, without your support for the Budget and Finance Committee and the, and the work that we've done. So I want to thank you first for giving me such great colleagues to work with on the committee, but also for the steadfast support that you've shown for our work product. And of course, uh, Andrew and the rest of your team who have been such great partners through us uh, in, in all of this. Um, Andrew Westall, Ed Johnson, Justin Wesson, um, and the rest of your team all uh, have been a great, contrib great contributor to this. To the mayor, uh, Mayor Garcetti, this is um, uh, Mayor Garcetti is my second mayor as budget chair, and I have to say um, this has been a tremendous process of collaboration with this this mayor. Um, we, I think, the vast majority of the priorities that this council has had are um, in concert with the priorities that our mayor has demonstrated in his proposed budget, and I appreciate the collaborative work that we've done um, together, uh, especially his budget team led by Matt Zabo, uh, Matt Crawford, and, and the rest of the budget team. Um, they've been great partners, and it shows in the work that we've produced here. Um, of course, our uh, CAO, Miguel Santana, and his staff, every year uh, I have my doubts about whether we're going to get through the year. I just, you know, I wonder if this is the year when the wheels are going to come off, and, and yet every year we've continued to make steadfast progress. So I want to thank uh, Miguel Santana and uh, his entire team, especially Jacob Wexler, uh, Melissa Fleming, uh, and the Budget Memo Squad uh, that <laughs> finds its way through the hundreds, literally hundreds, of budget memos that come out of, of our committee. Um, our CLA and their uh, great team, Sharon So uh, and Karen Kalfayan, Ray Morales, Andrea Galvin, uh, and the rest of the team, um, you know, you just saw it today. These motions and everything that we got through, the reports that we got through, the, the changes to the uh, mayor's uh, draft budget where we have found ways that we could do things more efficiently, and it, it, it all is because of the intensive work that the CLA does. And, and we spent 40 hours, I think they spent 40 hours in, you know, the span of about three days in going over this when they're working on this. So, so they really, they don't sleep much, and yet despite their lack of sleep, they produce exceptional work. So uh, thank you all. Um, all of the general managers and other departmental staff that you see here, um, you know, the budget doesn't happen just during budget hearings. It happens in the months of time leading up to that, too, when each of these departments worked so hard to create cost efficiencies, and if it weren't for the work that they'd done, 
uh, they've done over these last few years, the city might have met Mayor Reardon's expectations. But the fact is, we have realized a lot of cost efficiencies in those departments by, by uh, cutting back on staff and uh, finding innovation and, and uh, reorganization and consolidation and the many other things that uh, our general managers and departmental staff uh, have done to, to create uh, the efficiencies that we've benefited from. Our committee uh, staff, uh, Richard Williams and Erica Prolst, the uh, clerks for the Budget and Finance Committee, um, they make it happen smoothly, effortlessly, and I thank them uh, very much as well. And then there's many other people. All of the folks around the horseshoe standing behind us, um, all of the folks here from the city staff, um, they don't get named individually, um, but we couldn't do the work that we do in the council without our exceptional staff, city staff and council staff, and so I want to thank all of them as well very much. Uh, and, Mr. President, if there's... Uh, nothing further. I think we have uh, an excellent budget, and thank you all for, for making it happen. Okay, one more round of applause. Oh, stop it there. Stop it there. That's really and I just want to mention Heather, because she reports to the committee that I chair. Hey, Heather. <laughs> I want to make sure your name got mentioned. <laughs> Anyway, members, thank you a great deal. Uh, I think we've had a good morning. This uh, uh, deliberation, this council meeting is adjourned. Okay. <laughs> By finishing in less than two hours. I will take A new it. record. All right. <laughs> yes.